This video is going to provide an overview of downloading Audacity and also just the basics of the interface regarding Audacity. First thing I want to address though is why would I want to use Audacity over something like Adobe Audition? The biggest reason is you might not have to do a lot of heavy hitting audio editing. Audacity is free to use. You can also record with it just like you can with Audition. Probably the only biggest drawback to Audacity is the fact that as you're going to see with the interface, it kind of looks like it fell out of, you know, Windows 95 era. Otherwise, though, it is a solid piece of open source software that maybe you're not doing heavy hitting audio engineering. Uh, maybe you just need to make a quick change to a podcast piece or add background music. You don't need to be paying 20 to $40 a month for that. So to download Audacity, you're going to go to audacityteam.org. And just right at the top here, you can just download the software. So once you download the software here, you can double click to open and this is what you'll see. Now, just one thing to point out is by default, Audacity will be set up to check for updates. So that is something that you can continue to work with. And if you want to leave that on, that's fine. Similar to most Windows software packages, you've got the main menu bar going across the top here where you have your file, edit, select view, so on and so forth as far as working with creating content or editing audio. A few things to this menu specifically I'd like to point out is under the edit drop down menu, a lot of times I do have students asking, well, can I change this about the interface? Can I change that? So under edit preferences, this is kind of the main preference area that you can set as far as audio settings, playback, quality. So for instance, the interface, maybe you don't want light, maybe you'd prefer it to be the dark setting. There are extra menus that can be shown along the menu bar, so you can maybe choose to turn that on. Um, all sorts of other options too, as far as like import exports, uh, what type of quality for your sample rate whenever it's going through and we're doing conversions. And then you can say, okay. So here you can see, because I set the, the dark mode, it switched it over for me. Now, most audio interfaces, just as far as the baseline, when you don't actually have an audio file to work with, they're pretty bland because kind of this main center area really is for working with the audio files and the waves. So, However, there are some other things that you can do with the interface that I'd just like to point out before we even worry about opening anything or setting up a project. Each of these elements that are located at the top and bottom are their own little kind of attachments. And what I mean by that is at the right hand side, or I'm sorry, the left hand side, you have this kind of indentable toolbar selector here that you can click and hold and you can rearrange as far as what you want things to look like in your interface. So here you can see I'm actually changing as far as uh, the mic and the audio as far as their meters are concerned. Likewise, I can come in. You can also click and drag around and reposition outside of the interface. For something like Audacity though, just so you know, you're not gonna see in my videos very much where I have like things removed from the main Audacity window. I normally keep it kind of at the defaults here. Again, I'm not sitting in the software package doing a ton of editing for audio. So keep that in mind when you're working with this, but it is okay to sit there and kind of tweak how your uh, interface looks. One other thing to point out is you do have main menu bar options that do tie into the overall interface. These will be covered in later videos. However, you may have noticed there is like a tools drop down. There's also an effects drop down menu. These may not be displayed in the base UI that you see when you first open Audacity, but as we work with different types of tracks and audio pieces, these become active that you can actually apply them to your audio. 
So that's the bare bones basics of finding Audacity and also getting it installed. But then on top of that, just talking a little bit about the base interface and some things that you can do before you even start working in the software package.